Good morning. Hope you're having a wonderful day. My name is Robert Keith. I am the Hopeful Wanderer. One of the things that I've been doing over the past three years, I started out, um, inter interestingly enough, um, was it New Year's Eve 2017 maybe? I was sick and I couldn't go to see my sisters with my brother. I was hanging out with my, I was living with my brother at the time. And I was, I had a laptop and I was just, you know, bored. I don't really watch television. So I thought I'd look up old, you know, Dharma and Greg, you know, clips. You know, I love that. I love that show. Anyway. And, you know, I get all this side stuff on the YouTube thing and you know, then it started, you know, sci-fi and all that stuff, UFOs, that's always fun to watch. And then tarot, you know, I always, you know, love reading about Taurus and, you know, my chart, my horoscope. So I started watching tarot readers. And interestingly enough, the first one that I really started connecting with was Spiritual Escapades. She's a beautiful woman and very interesting and very thoughtful and, and a very sweet voice and very... Yeah, she's a Taurus too, so that didn't hurt. <clears throat> and she really actually helped me. It was interesting because at the time I was moving up to my son's house in Medford to hang out with my grandson for a minute because I hadn't got to bond with my grandson. So that was kind of like so important because if I was going to go traveling and stuff and I come back, I don't want my grandson to not know who I was. And so I went up there for a couple of years and got to hang out with my grandson, which was amazing. And then all this craziness happened. <laughs> But before I left to go see my son, I was watching her videos and it was really cool. And she would just tell me, you know, you're going, you're having a life change. You're, you're getting in the chariot and you're going. And I was like, cool, that's kind of interesting that that's exactly what happened. And it flies. And literally the U-Haul that we, that we got rented to bring all my art up to Medford, which is in a storage, which is now I lost already. It's been a month. But anyway. It looked like a little chariot, so that was kind of interesting. But but I want to talk about tarot reading. Um, I started, I picked up a couple uh, decks. Uh, I got a writer deck. I got a little, it's a really mini one. It's really cool. So it's easy to shuffle in your hand. I'm used to regular cards. And that's the interesting thing about me is my mother was a grifter, a gambler. She actually would go out and gamble at night at, you know, against got serious gentlemen and win. And a lot most of the time lose, but because she didn't know how to fold them, right? You didn't know when to walk away when you're up. But, and I always had cards around, so I was always playing with cards as a kid. So it was kind of interesting. It was easy for me just to pick up the cards and start, you know, throwing tarot. And I got like five decks. I got tarot mucha. I got a universal Celtic tarot. I got a white sage tarot and a steampunk tarot. So I have different decks to play with. And I'm still learning what the cards mean. I'm, you know, using your instincts and your your power and your energy and focusing and being positive and doing all the right things. And it's never easy because we're all human. And one thing I don't do is I don't read tarot cards upside down. And, and I know there are some readers out there. One in particular that kind of frustrates me because he's a, I, I like his style and he's really cool. But he reads upside down. And, and when I look at it, and I'm like, I don't even think he actually... And here's the thing. If you're going to throw tarot, and, and as far as I'm concerned, and how I look at upside down cards, I don't read them I would I, unless they happen during the shuffle. All my cards are upright when I start my shuffle, when I start doing my tarot. And if one card pops up upside down, then I will read it that way. But I will literally go through my deck and make sure they're all upright before I do that. But I don't think a lot of tarot readers do that. They just literally just, if they do, that's interesting because I notice a lot of his read, a lot when I read, when I watch his videos, a lot of them are upside down, and, then, and that usually con is a negative connotation on a positive. Like if you get the sun card and it's upside down, that's a, that's a negative. That's not good. But at the same time, you have to understand how many cards are in a deck, seventy-two or whatever. So the point is, is there are already cards in the deck to indicate a negative, like the devil card, the tower card, you know, the, the nine of swords, the eight of swords, the things that keep you trapped and in your head. And 
So there are already cards that are a negative, five of swords, that kind of thing, five of coins. So there's 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 already cards that indicate the, po the negative if it's necessary to read that way. So why automatically, you know, see, that's the way I look at it. I'm looking at it. The cards we're going to tell you. The cards are going to speak. The, you know, the spirit's going to help you and do your thing. And I don't encourage people to read upside down unless, like I said, like yesterday I was shuffling and they were all upright. And when I threw one down, one was upside down and I read it that way. And that was fine. But you always, I always check my deck and make sure they're all upright. That's just, I'm OCD about that anyway. But I just thought that was interesting. Some readers do that. And the ones I trust most don't read upside down. Unless, like I said, unless it pops up during the, the deck. Like one of my favorites is Zeta Zuri. She's really awesome. She's been out for a minute because of her voice. But yeah, she doesn't, she's like, she's like me. She's like, I always check my deck, make sure they're all upright. So if one does go upside down, I can read it that way. And that's meant to be that way. Because sometimes you have to understand some readers... I hate to say it, but not everybody's running high, as high vibration as they should. A lot of readers are cons. A lot of readers just are in it to make money. I mean, it's not like they're evil or bad. They're just they're looking for a job as a job, not as a guide to you know. The, it's a, kind of like a for the love of the game kind of thing. If I coach and I don't get paid, it's because I want to pass on my skills and my abilities. I want kids to grow and be positive, and you know. And so if you're a tarot reader and you're getting paid and, and that's your focus is the coin, then a lot of times you're not going to be getting the most positive reads and you're not going to get the most honest reads from that person. So you got to be careful who you watch on tarot when you're reading, when you're watching tarot on YouTube, because not everybody's running high. A lot of times the ones that really annoy me are the ones that saying like, beware, warning. It's like, oh my God, you know, you got to read this immediately. It's like, it's, it's, it's basically bait it's you know it's clickbait shit and that's not how you run as a as a as a light worker your job is to make people is uplift to encourage to give people hope when you start telling people they're in the wrong place you're doomed you know it's like fuck people are going to read this and react to it and this is supposed to be entertainment purpose only so when some of these people get really dark it's like they're tapping into dark energies and that's not positive either because a lot of times when you're a high vibrating reader a light worker you don't that it's kind of like you automatically exude the positive and the, you you see things from that angle and you focus on that you don't because you understand people are already going through it i don't need to tell people that they're having a hard time they're already having a hard time what you want people to know is that corrections eat right love yourself be positive it's always got to be positive affirmations. When you're telling people they got to go and you're not in the right place, and, oh, it's like it freaks people out. And it, it, and it can actually offset the path that they're truly on. So if you have one reader that tells you you're on the right path, keep doing what you're doing, keep thinking, keep praying, keep focusing in, keep doing you. And then you have another go, oh, you're wrong. And you're, who are you going to believe, right? You're on the wrong path. Turn around. It's like it's very confusing. So you have to be very careful about who you watch on YouTube. Like I said, there's some readers out there that, are, that mean well, but sometimes they tap into the darker energies. And you got to understand, a lot of time readers are humans, and they're dealing with human issues at the time, and that can affect their energy, the people around them. Like this reader that I was talking about, the reads upside down. He has a job where he works with around other people, and, that, and a lot of times people are toxic, and that can affect his energy. And that way, when he comes to read, it, 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 it's a negative. It's like, hey, he's having a bad day, so that's not a good day to read, right? I'm pissed off and having a bad day. I'm not going to channel for somebody because that would be terrible. Because they'd be like, because you, it, it, your energy deludes the read. So you have to be able to clear, uh, purify your energy so where when you're reading, you're not bringing negativity into the read. Because that person doesn't need that. If somebody's trusting your read and they want to know something, because they're coming there for hope. They're not coming there to be told they're going to... You know, they're going to get hit by a car next week. That kind of bullshit, right? They're, they want to be told that things are going to get better. It's always from a positive standpoint, right? <sighs> it's just, I don't know. It's one of those little pet peeves of mine when I watch readers. and like, Especially when I like them. It's just like, come on, I don't want to hear that shit, dude. Don't, it's like talking to a friend, right? Next thing you know, they just start dumping on you. You're like, I did not need this shit today, babe. Just turn that shit off, right? It's like, no negativity. Burp, burp, burp. That's how I feel. If, like, if you're going to just throw me some negative, I ain't going to have it. I'm the emperor of the universe, babe. I'm walking my path. I'm doing what I have to do. 
I'm not going to hear it. I'm not going to respond to it because it's like, just like I said, it's like a toxic friend that calls you on the phone and when you get off, you're drained instead of empowered. So watch what you, you know, watch who you listen to and boundaries always keep boundaries up. So nobody drains your energy and drains your thoughts and drains your happiness and, and your enthusiasm to get going in the day. Cause you know, every, every moment's a gift and we have to realize that live in the moment, appreciate the moment. Take a deep breath, smell some roses, hug a tree, tell somebody you love them. These are important things. So, so be careful. You know, it's and like I said, it's supposed to be for entertainment purposes, but there is truth to it. So you have to, you know, if you believe in spirituality, if you don't, then you're just good luck. But most people watching this probably, you know, have some sense of spirituality. Anyway, that's my bitch for the day. Anyway, I love you. God loves you, and the universe loves you. And we want you to have a wonderful day. So keep that high ground and do good.